All right, everybody. Uh, welcome back. It's uh, been a while since I've done a Why Did I Crash uh, episode. Um, for this one, it's one that actually I've been planning to do for a while. I just honestly keep putting it off. Uh, it's a little, frankly, close to home for me. Um, normally, I don't talk about who the driver was, but in this case, it was me. And uh, this is an incident that happened uh, last November in my 2019 Corvette CR1. Uh, happened at Summit Point, Shenandoah. Uh, cresting the bridge straight and it's uh, why you don't see any more ZR1 videos from me and um, We're gonna start by well, actually I'll start by saying um, You'll see this is a pretty big shunt um, You know this car from a safety equipment standpoint was completely stock stock belt stock seats uh, airbags uh, Helmets, you know, obviously driver driver and passenger were wearing helmets driver was wearing a Simpson hybrid pro or hybrid s um, GM makes a heck of a safe car, that's all I'll say. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this thing first in uh, real time and then we'll go through and dissect what happened. What you might have noticed is kind of the first thing I noticed, which was you hear the rear tires uh, spin up cresting the hill there on the bridge straight. Um, and really that's kind of where it all starts to go wrong. Um, and what we've got here is we're going to look at a couple different charts. Um, we're using Pi Toolbox 10, which gives us an ability to actually have multiple uh, kind of windows, which is nice. So this first window we've got here uh, is we've got charts for wheel speed. So left front, right front, left rear, right rear, just like you're staring down at the top of the car. Uh, over here, we've got the accelerator, um, and then you've got steering angle and uh, yaw rate. So, and then this right here is a uh, video. So, um, first thing you'll notice is, you know, right here you can see this big speak uh, spike in um, rear wheel speed. Um, that's obviously you actually see an earlier one. So there's a small spike where the tires spin up uh, just as you cross under the bridge. It's a little bit wet there. Um, typically and then uh, you can see they spin up again uh, just as we're cresting the bridge straight here so um, you know I'll, I'll point out a couple things I, I was actually out in the same car um, this this car was on street tires so it was um, a late season event I was just out there to largely just see some friends um, and I was on Michelin Pilot Super Sports which are kind of notoriously cold-blooded um, but I'd been out earlier and I found, you know, you put some heat in them. They actually script pretty well once they were warmed up. Uh, in this case, I was just taking some out, someone out for a quick trip. And I was told uh, pretty much no more than two laps or they'll get sick. So I did a lap to warm the tires. This is starting onto the second lap. Um, and that's kind of when everything went uh, wrong for me. So um, you see the tires start to spin up here. Um, and let's look at a couple other things. So first of all, you know, from a steering perspective, there's a little bit of steering angle in the car, not much. Uh, if you're familiar with this, maybe you're at grid light this past weekend, um, you know that, that straight has actually got a kink to the right as you're coming up over the hill. Um, it's also, if we blow up the screen here, um, you'll see it's not exactly straight across either. So I'm pretty close to the edge, but you can see it's got a little bit of an angle to the right-hand side, left-hand side, and then right-hand side. Um, and... You know, if we look at, um, you know, this data and then let's go ahead and actually look at the suspension data. So I have a second page here um, that's just the suspension data. So what you can see is same as before. This is left front, right front, left rear, right rear. This is actually suspension movement. So you can see where it goes from down here where you're in compression. This is, you know, the car is basically squatted down on the suspension um, to where at this point it's pretty much unloaded. So you've got... Uh, two inches of droop in the front, you know, a little over, you know, a little over one inch in the rear on one side, um, and again about the same on the other side. And then also, I want you to notice uh, this other chart is kind of neat. Um, there's a lateral G or a, a vertical G sensor in the car, not just lateral and longitudinal. So you can actually see the overall uh, weight that's on the car. So you can see the car is just starting to unload here, and as you crest the hill, the car has only got point two G's of uh, weight on it. So again, the car is heavily unloaded 
and then it kind of rebounds a little bit and it unloads again. So you'll see where this comes into play later, later on, but I just want to show that. And then um, again, here's gas and brake. So let's go back and look at um, our wheel spin again. And what you can see is the tires spin up and over here what we have is yaw rate. So um, what you can see is right around the time the tires spin up, the car starts to develop a lot of yaw. So as the driver, um, you know, my recollection is that I, I felt that um, when the tires spun up. And I was actually in the throttle a little longer than normal here. Um, but you can see I'm starting to come off the throttle um, as they're spinning up which might be why they, they spun back down again. It's hard to say, um, but the car's got a yaw in it. And then as the yaw progresses, you can see I start dialing in spirit, steering input, trying to correct uh, what's basically a right-hand yaw uh, of the car from the tires spinning up. Now, I'm not exactly sure why it yawed when they spun up. Um, it could be the angle of the track surface here. Again, you can kind of see where you've got a slope uh, from the bypass where it cuts across. It's hard to say exactly. I uh, stared at this data a lot trying to figure out exactly what happened um, and whether I precipitated it with steering input. But, you know, again, there really wasn't much when it started to yaw. And then the other thing I'll point out is, you know, right around the time it's, it's yawing, if we go back to our suspension data, um, we can see we're still fully unloaded and our vertical G's are all the way down at, at 0.21. So what happens is uh, the car is pivoted Basically, you're unloaded. So, you know, trying to actually correct this with steering, you know, we try to give it a little bit of counter steer. That doesn't work. It yaws even more. Try to give it more counter steer. But, you know, at this point, you know, while there's 33 degrees of steering input and 29 degrees a second of yaw, the fact is there's 0.13 Gs of gravity holding the car to the ground. So cold tires, you know, very little weight on the car. Suspension unloaded, um, you know, frankly, by the time the car loads back up again, you know, from a weight perspective, you know, we're basically already on our way off the track. Um, and with, I'll say another thing I learned from dissecting this video is um, you may notice that here there's actually three or four tenths difference between what you see in the video screen and what you see on the chart. So... Um, whereas we're looking at, at 1 minute 5 seconds 0.82 in the lap, we're only looking at 1 minute 5 second 0.4 on the video. So if we actually just scroll forward a little bit, um, you'll see that from a video perspective. Whoops, I already went too far. 104.8, whoops. We're already 105.8. We're already pretty much off the edge of the road here. Um, so unfortunately, there just wasn't much time with the car loaded. It was already heavily yawing um, to try to save it. And so uh, I hit the wall, basically slid along the wall and thankfully scrubbed off a lot of speed. Um, you know, from a speed perspective, you could see in the, the wheel speed traces, you know, wheel speed was about 120, 125 when it spun up. And, you know, luckily when, when the car hit the wall, it was all the way down to about um, actually just under 40 miles an hour or just over 40 miles an hour. So, um, and it was really that secondary impact that did most of the damage of the car. So I hope you guys find this helpful. Um, wanted to put this out there. Um, frankly, my biggest recommendation is, um, if you have a situation like that, um, it definitely, if I had breathed off the gas earlier, the tires wouldn't have spun up, they wouldn't have yawed. And then of course, I think we all know the, the risks of cold tires and frankly, just not giving it enough time to heat the tires up before uh, trying to build some speed. So hope you find this helpful um, and uh, have a great day.